Hey, what's going on, everyone? DBougie86 here again. What I'm going to be doing in this next series of video is give you my top 30 films of 2015. Now, with that being said, the reason why I said next couple of videos, I tried to record this video twice already and uh, it wouldn't upload the whole video so I decided to do it in two parts so we'll do 30 through 16 then we'll do 15 to 1 the next video now I like that idea actually because I get to talk a little more about the films without worrying about Russian now with that being said 2015 was an interesting year with a lot of interesting films and these ones are the ones that stand out to me in my view and experience now with that being said I did binge watch a ton of these over the weekend a lot have been added to uh, the list including my top 10 has changed since I last did it Last minute it changed. It's a bona fide top 10 for me now. The other one was before I was more knowable and less known of the films in my library and all that good stuff. And after rewatching, I got my opinions changed on a few films, including one that we'll get into when we get to it in these videos so without further ado let's start this so we can get on going now at number 30 we have all the way from Germany Der Samurai this is a very strange film if you haven't seen it what it pretty much implies is uh, this uh, transvestite with a samurai sword running amok in a town and it has some weird like meaning towards the film you could interpret it any way you can it's one you def have to watch to make your own opinions on it and I would suggest rewatching it twice because then you'll have a little more because you might see things that you missed you know what I mean but yeah, Der Samurai number 30. Interesting film for sure. Number 29, we have one from Australia. And that is Wormwood, Road of the Dead. This is a very interesting take on the zombie genre. It has high octane action in it. And with that being said, I really liked how they... Uh, did, uh, the zombies in this film I like the take on the zombies what they did with them and I like uh, the effects and the story and the setting and the Australian outback kind of like a post apocalyptic it kind of reminds me a little bit of Mad Max in a way uh, with that being said this film I know has a lot of mixed reactions with people of the story I have a few problems with it myself but those problems I could uh, put aside because I actually enjoyed the film. It's a fun little film and I enjoyed it. That's why it's at number 29. Wormwood. Number 28, we have a film from this year. It's kind of like an indie film, very low budget. It's very guerrilla filmmaking style, if I have to say that myself. And that film in question is Crazy Murder, if you haven't seen this cover. This film is kind of fucked up, if you haven't seen it. It pretty much follows a homeless dude who goes on a homicidal rampage through uh, New York City. It's a uh, very low budget, and they actually film on set, like a uh, guerrilla sets with like a... Uh, no permission and just film shit and it's really well done how they did that and I like the grittiness of like the camera angles and 
the dirt of the film. It's kind of like a, in the vein of like, kind of reminds me a little bit of that gritty, dirty New York setting, but in modern times. And with that being said, there's some fucking nasty parts to this film. I actually gagged a few times. Any film that makes me gag uh, stays with me over the years, and it's fucking shit's fucking nasty. Shit, literally. Yeah. Said the word. Took the word right out of my mouth. But yeah, Crazy Murder. Highly recommendable if you like your low-budget indie flicks and you, you like crazy fucked up shit it's up there that's why it's a number 20 28 yep number 27 we have house with a hundred eyes this is a really interesting found footage film about uh, this couple that makes snuff films in their house and the title of the film is because they have cameras all around the house to film everything and this film's not typically the goriest, but it has a lot of comedic tones with the two main characters, especially in the beginning of the film. It kind of tenses up at the end of the last few minutes of the film. And with that being said, I really enjoyed this film. It's one of the better found footage films I've seen in a while. So I recommend it, House with a Hundred Eyes. Number 26, we have the first of uh, many uh, slasher films to be on this list. And that is Lost After Dark. I had a blast with this film. It's really like reminiscent of the 80s and stuff. Like, actually, the cool thing about this film, if you haven't seen it, they make it look like it was a lost 80s film. What I mean by that. That it was an actual like film that was discovered that was made in the eighties because it they put all the extra grain in it and stuff and there's actually like the infamous real missing part of, in the film which I knew kind of pissed a few people off while watching it but I actually enjoyed that about it because it was really like interesting because I kind of got that's what they were trying to do with the film. So Lost After Dark at number 26. Number 25, we have Extraterrestrial, which is a very interesting alien, like, invading slash, like, capturing people film with, directed by the Vicious Brothers, who you might know from directing films like Grave Encounters. It has a really interesting cast. I know one of the chicks in it. It's the chick from uh, The Den. And it has Michael Ironside in it, who I'm a really huge fan of, actually, Michael Ironside. I grew up watching tons of his films, Starship Troopers, Total Recall, V. He's been in a ton of fucking movies, that guy. And he's fucking great in this. His role's really small in it, but it's memorable at the same time. Yeah, Extraterrestrial, I really enjoyed this one from uh, IFC slash Scream Factory. Fun film. Number 24, we actually have another one from IFC and Scream Factory. And that is the creature feature killer insect film, Stung. Really fun, like, horror com comedy elements. With uh, It actually has some great practical effects in this. I was actually shocked why, because I thought they were going to use, like, well, from the cover alone, like, the, you think they're going to use full-blown CGI in the film. They do use some CGI, but I think they use it in, like, the right parts, for the most part. There might be one part in particular where there is a little CGI, which kind of bugged me a little bit, but this is a fun-ass film. I really enjoy this, and it has a... Great cast with like Clifton Collins Jr. and Lance Henriksen, who both do like a great job in the film with their characters. Lance is actually not a cameo in this film, which is awesome. And yeah, if you like your creature features and or like killer bug films, 
Death Grab Stun, if you haven't seen it already, check it out. Alright, at number... Where are we? 23! We have Call Girl of Cthulhu, which is a film I reviewed earlier this year. I really had fun with this film. If you like your, like your HP Lovecraft slash like Stork Warden type films, check this one out. It's kind of not like a, it kind of reminds me kind of like a sleazy like version of a Stork Warden film with HP Lovecraft, if you know what that means. It's really fun and it has some great effects in it. Call Girl of Cthulhu. At number 22, we have From the Dark. This is a film I was hearing a lot of negative things about when it first came out. And then I heard a few positive things about it. I really liked this one. It was really, really well done. I was actually shocked that they was getting this film was getting hate. It's actually a Irish like a vampire film and it's from the director of Stitches, which Stitches was a horror comedy. This is like straight horror film and it's really well done and atmospheric and it has I like the characters there's not really a lot of characters in it there's a few but it just gets down to the nitty gritty of it and it's a fun little film I recommend from the dark and number 21 we have from uh if you haven't seen, I actually did a review of this on my channel. And this film is from Dave Parker. It's his first film that he ever directed. And it is Slimy Little Bastards. Really, really fun, like, little anthology film that revolves around, like, these little creatures. Where uh, this guy, played by Brandon Sockhill, telling each story. And it's really interesting. And I actually really enjoyed all the shorts on this. And it has a fun cast like Brandon Sockhill and Dustin Mills is in the film. And I like the effects of it and really well done little like short anthology. I really enjoyed this. If you haven't gotten this yet, check it out. It's a, it runs only a little over an hour. So it's just a fun little watch. It's nothing too mind blowing or quick. But Dave did a really good job with this film and I really enjoyed it. Slimy Little Bastards at number 21. Alrighty, what else do we got here? We got five more. And then we're going to a break. At number 20, we have from John McNaughton, The Harvest. Starring Michael Shannon and Samantha Morton. This is a film I really enjoyed if you like your psychological horror films with some great acting in it I might add this is one for you I actually really had fun with this film with the performances and stuff especially from Michael Shannon and Samantha Morton who were fucking awesome in this film really really interesting film and released by again IFC and Screen Factory At number 19, we have a horror comedy. And this horror comedy goes by the title of Bloody Knuckles. Really fun film. If you haven't seen this yet, pretty much fucking... I had did a full-length review on this. It's a killer hand film mixed with a little, like, revenge aspects to it. And it has a lot of great references that I really dug and... I just like how the it was uh, put together and the characters and stuff. And the quirky performances and stuff, like especially by the main guy in the film. What's his name? Adam Boys. He does a really good job. and Really fun and it has a lot of gore, especially near the end of the film. Fucking awesome stuff. Number... Where are we? Number 20. 
number 18, we have a film that I really enjoyed. And that one is Blood Punch. And, yep. Which was a really interesting take on, uh, if you haven't seen the film Groundhog Day, you know, the when he repeats over and over again the day. It's kind of like in that vein of a film. And with that being said, it's hella fun. Dude. I like the characters and when they have quirky performances. I really like the outcome and how the film ended. Really fun film. If you like, like low-budget indie horror comedies, this one's definitely for you. Blood Punch at number 18, I think. Yeah, 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 that's right. Number 17, we have What We Do in the Shadows. If you haven't seen this yet, this is pretty much a mockumentary where this film crew follows a group of vampires that are loft mates. I know, it's funny already. I was laughing while watching. <laughs> and fucking, uh, they pretty much follow them day and day with the normal daily routines or nightly routines. And with that being said, I really like the difference of all the vampires in the film. And there's a lot of other creatures, and the effects were really well done. Really fun mockumentary. If you like films, like, non-horror-wise, like, Best in Show, and... What's another one? Uh, Waiting for Guffman. That's in that vein, like... Of doc a fake documentary style. What We Do in the Shadows. And at number 16, we have... Another horror comedy. There was a lot of great horror comedies this year. And that is Suburban Gothic. If you haven't seen this yet, really, 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 really fun-ass film. I really like the performances, especially by uh, Matthew Gray, Goobler, and Kat Dennings. Really good together. And Ray Wise steals the show. And he's fucking hilarious in this film. I fucking died laughing watching this film. Really fun film. That is it for this part of the video, guys. I will upload this. Have it ready for you guys. Then I'll record my second part. So I hope you enjoy this. I'll see you in a few minutes. Peace out.